Uh, my name is Dave Brunt and I manage the activity at the Lean Enterprise Academy and I'm joined by our chairman Dan Jones today and also uh, David Marriott who's uh, one of our senior lean coaches. Okay so um, today's webinar um, we've scheduled 30 minutes for today. The agenda consists of a brief introduction um, and um, uh, um, a question and answer with Dan and an opportunity for you to, um, uh, to, to ask some more general questions and then we'll, then we'll do a wrap up. Uh, we'll stay on a little bit longer if anybody wants to discuss Lean, the summit or any of LEA's activities. Um, just as a reminder, um, LEA is a not-for-profit. Uh, it was set up by Dan over 20 years ago. Um, and what we're trying to do is to help people become uh, reliant, self-reliant on their lean journey. Uh, do take a look at the website. Um, it explains our history, what we're researching, how we work with partner companies and all our learning, teaching and coaching and sharing activities. OK, so um, the summit is our conference that we develop um, when we've got something to say, really, um, to help people learning and implementing lean thinking. Um, it's, um, it's a key in-person activity um, and um, the idea is to help delegates by sh sharing how lean can be used to solve problems um, of today and tomorrow whilst enabling participants to build their own network of lean thinkers. We've got four key themes for the 2023 event, um, the productivity challenge, supply chain disruption, the environmental crisis and lessons learned from COVID-19 and the principle of Kaizen runs through all of these. So um, there are both keynote plenary sessions and also learning sessions which you can tailor to your agenda. Uh, there are over 30 speakers from 15 companies including the Aramis Group, um, Iberia, Securus, Strategy Deployment, the NHS, Tallis, Technip FMC, uh, um, uh, Ecobat and of course Toyota. Um, I did say Securus, didn't I? Because Gordon's here, I don't want to upset him. Um, okay, so we're told that it's the best event of its kind and regularly attracts a diverse audience. Um, our last event had 160 representatives from 22 countries. We're currently at 110 in the room uh, with eight weeks to go. So eight, it's eight weeks as of Tuesday. So uh, we're expecting a good crowd and um, we're expecting a really, a really good event. OK, so um, before I introduce Dan, just some quick housekeeping. We'd like to address any questions that people have um, on today's subject. So if, if you raise a question, please just type into the chat section of Teams and Dave and I will be looking out for what the questions are are as a courtesy to everybody please mute your microphone until the q a session um, and that way we, we can all stay focused and if there's any background noise we're not picking it up uh, we will record the section session uh, we'll edit it we'll edit the content so that only the slides and the presentations are in the recording and after today's session you'll get access to a link okay so um let's get started so Dan, we've we've asked you to do a talk on the at the summit, and it's really got two elements to it. Um, the first is a reflection, and secondly, a what next. Um, obviously, we don't want to give too much away. Um, we want people to attend, um, but um, but let's let's just start by a few with a few questions. Um, you started this whole thing off on summits. Um, the first one, which I remember going to years ago, 1997, was in Nottingham. Why did you do summits? And do you still think that they're relevant today? Well, I think we did summits for two reasons. Um, the first is that uh, we learned very, very early on uh, in the research program that we did to uh, build, to develop the Lean Thinking book, uh, we discovered that bringing the enthusiastic pioneers together created enormous energy and fun and stimulus. And um, bringing the pioneers together uh, created a buzz and, uh, and it was really powerful. But the second reason is actually, it was, a, it was actually an intrinsic part of our research process. Um, before we started the summits, we had we came out of two very large research projects 
that were done with uh, industry sponsors. We had a big 100, 100 plus meeting um, on a yearly basis with our sponsors and we developed our research and tested our research uh, with those, those sponsors and um, learned an awful lot from the feedback we got from them. And then after we published the, both the machine book and then later on the Lean Thinking book, um, we also really used them to collect the questions, the research questions that we wanted to go away and study. The, as we pieced together the pieces of Toyota's system and gradually understood layer by layer the, the true significance of it. And so step by step, um, we would hear from the pioneers their latest experiments and their failures and their successes. And then we would uh, distill the questions, the next steps that we needed to research and then carry out those research by finding companies willing to experiment and try these things out, these new things out in their own operations and then report back at the next summit. And then at the next summit, we would hear those uh, those lessons and we would distill the next set of questions and so on and so forth. So that that really was our reali one reality check mechanism. Obviously, we were doing lots of plant visits during the but in between times between the summits, but really the summits were a collective way of taking stock of the the research. And uh, yeah. gradually, as we pieced together more and more understanding of the Toyota system, um, we got deeper and deeper into the leadership issues and so on uh, that uh, that we're currently dealing with. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that, that's that's why we always start with the questions. And we're, we see that lots of other conferences don't really start with questions to answer. Um, they always start with just who can they get to speak, really. Whereas what we've done, and this year, what we've done is we're looking at those four themes. And we're looking at those four themes because those are the things that people keep saying to us are the big challenges, the next set of challenges. To, I think the other, sorry, the, the other thing I think we learned early on is that uh, pioneers and uh, people in organizations actually learn most from hearing what other organizations and other pioneers have been doing uh, rather than listening to teachers or academics or, uh, or consultants. And indeed, we learned very early on, we had to switch the consultants off because that was a, a dead, that was a turn off as for the audience that was expecting, um, you know, real pioneering thinking and a debate. And uh, that raised the level of the conferences. So I think having key, particularly top executives, which you've had right from the very beginning, um, give their perspective on the experiments. Um, gave it a gravitas and a reality that people valued. Yeah, yeah. So what are you looking forward to for this year? Well, I've been out of things for five years and I'm not, <laughs> I have no intention of really stepping back into them, but um, <laughs> I was, I, I was intrigued. Um, I'm intrigued to hear where the movements got to and, and uh, hear the, the, the latest round of experiments. Um, and maybe even it tr triggers some questions that I might think about myself. Um, although I'm not walking around the Gemba now, I'm, I've, I've done with that. I've left it to the next generation who's uh, collecting the questions. But nevertheless, um, I'm intrigued and I'm, I'm interested to see uh, what these people have got to say. Right. OK, good. Um, OK, so we, we called this session uh, how to do how to develop lean learning processes. So why do you think it's important to design learning processes for uh, leading and coaching lean? Do you think it's important? I think it's extremely important. Um, I think it's uh, one of the pieces of the puzzle. I think the tendency all the way through this process of delayering Toyota's onion and understanding different pieces of this system is uh, is to um, is basically to to see lean as a learning system and as a leadership system, and so this piece about um, leaders understanding that they need to lead themselves rather than commission others to do it for them um, 
presents a problem, obviously, of how do you build the internal capability for team leaders and uh, group leaders and uh, line staff to be the actual teachers and, and leaders themselves be the actual teachers, uh, rather than hiring outside teachers to do it in a classroom. Because we know that this is a learning by doing, a learning by problem solving process. And um, learning by problem solving means also uh, having a good structured way of teaching lean leaders or lean uh, line leaders to, uh, to, to train their, their teams. And so this, this is another piece of the puzzle. It's not the only piece of the puzzle. It's not mm -hmm. often as we think, you know, this is the magic bullet that will make lean work. Well, no, this is not, this is not the magic bullet. This is another piece of the process yeah. of building a lean system. But it's a very important piece. And it's a piece, you know, it's a piece that's pretty unique, actually, because what you've done is you've got some some very exper experienced Toyota colleagues to help you write down the methods that uh, Toyota uses to teach and build its own learning system, and that uh, and to make that freely available to others who are in that situation or wanting to build their own internal learning capability. That's a, that's a very powerful a powerful thing to do. So it's it's not the only piece of the puzzle that we need to think about now, but it's a, an important one. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I mean, as you say, it's just all, all of this stuff's like an onion, isn't it? The more things you peel away, the more things you you, you end yeah. up seeing. So, um, so, so that, so, like you say, it's not, it's not the only, it's not the only thing that we should be doing. But um, for the for those of you that are on the, um, uh, you know, uh, thinking what 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 do we mean by this? Just just a couple of slides. So just click just click the next slide, Dave, and we'll we'll just we'll just quickly um, we'll just quickly explain this. So um, you can do the whole thing, I think. So 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 what what we did was we just applied five W's and one H to learning, teaching, and coaching lean, and we said, well, what why is it necessary? to do that what's the purpose that you're actually trying to to achieve and what we what we've said is that one of one of the things that we observe when whenever we watch what people are doing is that very rarely are people self-reliant in being able to learn teach and coach lean um, and so what we were trying to do is we, we were trying to find mechanisms if you like for being able to do that to, to build that self-reliance the second piece is that toyota uses this training within industry process which starts off with knowledge then it goes to understanding develops capability and then uh, and then the, the the capability to then teach and coach others so there's like a four levels if you like of of capability building and and obviously the the what what you're actually trying to achieve is is this level four where you've got the ability you're capable but you've all, also you can teach and coach others and what we what we concluded was that a lot of the education that's out there is actually only really looking at knowledge and understanding it's not really looking at capability and the teaching and coaching element and so um so but we concluded that the purpose was for that to be you know to, to to gain that to gain that ability we then looked at where when and who and of course there's a whole continuum of things there you know lots of people do stuff in the classroom lots of people do stuff in the workplace and of course there's a tapering effect and you can map that over to the capability piece in terms of those little circles and and filled in uh, filled in cheeses um there's also a whole piece around whether you treat the training as a batch and as a one off versus a continuous flow type events. And then there's this whole thing, as Dan just said, about, you know, is it outsiders that do this training? Is it internal consultants and lean teams or is it leaders? And then finally, if you ask all of those questions, then, of course, you you come up with a a, a proposed best way to achieve what you're trying to achieve 
you know you, you might you might decide you don't want leaders to to teach in which case the activities are different but what we said was well actually for sustainability for the sustainable transformation um what you actually need is you need the leader to be the teacher so how do you actually achieve that and so and so the 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 thing that we've been experimenting with we, we experimented really with a couple of things but one is the development of an online platform because you can get a lot of knowledge and some understanding online so you're trying to shorten the the lead time of understanding by basically doing that and then the second thing that we've been doing is we've been experimenting with ways what are the best ways that we can get that we can basically develop leaders capability to be able to teach and coach others and what we've done is developed uh, a series of teach posters so that's the that's the next slide dave and 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 that what we've done is we've we've taken key subject areas and then put the um the teamwork it whether it's teamwork in or whether it's even the lean transformation framework or problem solving or building a management a lean management system etc we've put these teach posters together that explain the purpose and process and people around the subject area and then use each teach poster is very very simple um graphics uh with a um uh, um a workbook at the back of it to explain the important steps the key points and the reasons why around each one of the um graphics so because pictures are easy to remember than words and then actually the leader can can do, do the teaching with with the team so that's that's essentially what we've what what we've been uh, we've been experimenting with and you know i think probably um like like dan said it's not the only way of doing any of this but but what appears to us to be an issue is that leaders would use a method if a method was was there but but in so many cases they don't have a method on which to hang their own to make it easy for them to be able to teach and coach and of course because they don't have a teaching coach they don't really engage there's like a parallel universe which is improvement people and the and the line is just carrying on doing what it's doing so um so we, we've we've been using that and we've got a few cases that we're going to uh we're going to present at the summit where people have been doing this uh, employee involvement and and doing teamwork in using this using this process and um we'll let the people that have been experimenting with it explain it and tell us about what the strengths and weaknesses of it are you yeah, know because we can still keep going through the pdca cycle um with, with it all so so that's so that that's kind of that's kind of it really um so um okay so that's that's the learning processy bit um dan we've got a visit to toyota the day after the summit and the visit centers around kaizen and in particular developing a kaizen spirit or a kaizen mindset um why do you think that's important well i've visited toyota d side many many times as you have over the years and I observed a quite unique experiment i think in toyota's system it's quite a small plant um it's been there for a very long time it has not had the benefit of huge economies of scale. On the other hand, it's really focused on building a small volume of a high mix of products. And that is actually quite a challenge. Um, so they have actually doubled down on the learning probably more intensely than, than many other Toyota plants. And it's a really very good example to see of a plant that has over the years very systematically built the capabilities of its teams uh, to handle uh, new challenges all the time. And they've coped with a much, much richer and varied product mix that's constantly changing um, than I've seen in many other Toyota plants. So actually it's a very, very good place to go and see this learning system in action uh, because it's quite small. You can get your head around the whole thing 
Uh, but also you can see the the results in front of you of many, many, many years of many, many, many Kaizen uh, experiments and A3 projects and so on. So um, I would urge anybody uh, who hasn't really understood uh, the full depth of this to, to go on that tour to visit. It's really quite enlightening. And they're just an extraordinary bunch of people that kind of yeah. survived um, despite the odds in a sense. Because Toyota obviously didn't expand in the UK the which they in, in the way they originally envisaged. On the other hand, the D side plant has actually continued to justify its existence because of the depth of uh, of knowledge and experimentation that they've had there. So yeah. it's a very good yeah. it's a very very good example to go and see. Yeah, and I, I think I think the other thing is they're very good at explaining what they do. Yes, yes. And and they and they you know quite a lot of the time there's all this mystique about what people do and what they don't do. Um, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're northerners, a large proportion of them are northerners, and they just make it pretty simple in terms of what, you know, what, what, how, they, how they explain what, what they do. So, so I think it's, it's, it's very good from that, uh, from that side. Well, right, okay, so um, your talk at the summit, um, is about what you've learned and what you would do differently. Um, can you give us a taster without giving too much away? Um, well, I don't know how much I'd, I'd do differently starting then when we did. Um, I think I would do differently if I was starting out now. Absolutely, the context has changed fundamentally. And I think the, the initial focus on selling this as an efficiency improvement uh, process of eliminating mudra and so on uh, is replaced i think by much more an ex uh, much more need to for speed and uh, and uh, cumulative uh, scale up and so scaling up and doing things rapidly and going through several product generations rapidly and incorporating kaizen in that process um, is kind of what we need now to cope with the, the environmental crisis. Um, I'm also going to talk about the fact that I'm quite sure now that we haven't got to the end in describing Toyota's system. Yeah. And uh, I think there are several very, very important missing pieces that haven't been fully understood yet. And uh, that we need that you, the next generation, need to need to think about. And uh, Ironically, I question whether Toyota can actually complete this system themselves. Um, but I think we can build on the logic that Toyota and the Toyota example uh, to, to get insight into what we'll need to develop. And I'm going to talk to there about, um, about the IT logic, the logic behind the IT architecture of the IT systems, which has to be fundamentally different and uh, also how we capture learning and using artificial intelligence, using AI to capture learning. You know, that piece of the, of the, um, of the Abaya room, the last piece of the puzzle where they capture the knowledge and so on, um, and they use that cumulatively to, uh, to build uh, knowledge and experience for next, next iteration and so on. That's often skipped over and neglected, but actually is an extraordinary piece, important piece. I remember years ago when we, at Unipart, we developed the, um, the database of every single project that was done right across the organization globally. Uh, as the starting point for any future Kaizens was actually to go back and see what, uh, what other people had done in similar circumstances and what tools they needed and who, who could teach those tools and so on and so forth. Well, I think we have, we've realized that Toyota's system is a learning system and um, we need to think about how we can use AI to um, build and accumulate knowledge uh, much faster. So I'm going to yeah. talk about um, how the next steps in the, in, the, in the development of lean systems. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.